Hey guys, this is Aaron. Later this week, we have a video coming out from Basecamp 2018 from Chris Rosewarn. Chris is a designer for major films. So he's done some awesome work for some cool movies that you've seen. Um, and his whole video is about how he uses SketchUp to help visualize some of these amazing looking props that you end up seeing in things like sci-fi movies and action films. So well worth checking out, especially if you have any interest at all in how that stuff is designed or made. I wanted to do a little bit of a kind of a sneak peek into the stuff that he does. Chris's presentation primarily is showing the work that he's done before. One of the things he talks about is something that's done a lot in prop making or miniature making, which is kit bashing. If you don't know that term, the idea of kit bashing is taking pieces of existing things and repurposing them and putting them together. He gives an example of uh, a prop that he worked on where he actually put together some medical devices and that sort of thing. Uh, it was really cool. But it made me think a little bit about using SketchUp. So one of the things that I like SketchUp for personally is going in and creating something from scratch, starting with just geometry and building something out of it. But with the 3D warehouse, we have a junkyard of millions of potential pieces that can be used for kit bashing. So I thought it might be kind of cool to look at some tips and tricks for taking 3D warehouse models and using them to whip up a brand new model in SketchUp. So let's hop in and take a look at that. So here I am inside of SketchUp and I've already downloaded some models from the 3D warehouse. Um, I figured the video would be less exciting if half of it was me just kind of poking around in 3D Warehouse and thinking, I like this, I don't like this, that kind of thing. So I went ahead and skipped that part. So the models I downloaded started with the KitchenAid stand mixer. This was just something that I liked the shape of this thing and I thought I would build something off of this. I didn't know what, but that was the first piece I downloaded. From there, I figured maybe I'll make this into some kind of a vehicle. So I ended up grabbing this flame tank, FT200, and I figured I could pull the treads off that and make it some kind of a vehicle. I wanted to put some spotlights or maybe some arms on there, so I grabbed this final arm model, as well as this four by spotlights on track. I figured those would make some good pieces to go on the outside of my vehicle. And I wanted to put some additional detail. The, the main part of the KitchenAid that I want to use is kind of bland, not a whole lot of detail on it. So I grabbed this Modelli Griebel generic file and figured I could use that to maybe add some detail to my model. So with that, I'm going to, since I have these files already downloaded into this model, they all showed up inside here, inside of my component list. So what I can do is I can just grab one. I'm gonna start with this tank. I'm gonna click on it and drag it and drop it in here. Cool looking tank. This is gonna make a good base for my model. It's also a decent scale. You can see Mark, that seems about right for the size of Mark. When I bring stuff into a model from 3D Warehouse, one of the issues that's going to come in, of course, is we don't know how this is constructed, if it's well constructed, if it's got issues. So really the only way to find out is to dive in. So I'm just going to double click in here and I can see this is actually a monolithic model. Everything in here is a separate piece. Not a big deal. I don't need most of this. So I'm just going to come in here, grab the center section, delete, and then uh, do some cleanup to get rid of everything except for the two treads on the sides. All right, so once I have that cleaned up, I have them inside a group. They're, they're two separate pieces. One of the things I may want to do is come in here and maybe group these separately. Then I can actually come out here and release these, explode this, and have my two separate groups. All right, that looks pretty good. Next thing is the body. So I'm going to bring in my KitchenAid, which also happens to be to scale which makes a lot of sense. This is obviously not gonna be big enough to work for my purposes. So I'm gonna actually clean this up before I blow it up. So I'm gonna come in here. I do actually have separate pieces there, separate piece there. Looks like, uh, there's a separate piece. There's a separate piece in here. All right, this is all ended up as one piece. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that, delete it. I probably don't need that geometry. All right, 
So that's really the part that I want. So I'm just going to take that now, now that I have that, and use scale to bring that up. There we go. And you can fairly quickly see kind of what I got going on here. And so in just a couple steps, I've already got this thing going from being a mixer and a tank model into being something, maybe it's a, uh, I don't know, moon rover, something like that. Um, obviously there's some things I would want to remove off of here. Uh, this, this right here, I would probably not want it to say mixer on the side of my super awesome, uh, rover so maybe i'll take that off and yeah that looks looks better moving forward this is where i grab these other pieces and pull them in uh, maybe i'll grab my lights put some lights across the front and back and uh, maybe even pull in my arm and throw that on here so as a nice thing this model has a couple pieces one piece is a group of everything, and then inside of that, I have this track geometry, and then these are actually components. Kind of nice because I can, uh, if I make a change to one of them, I'll change all of them. So I do want to keep them as components as I continue working through here. So my arm is obviously a little out of scale for what I want to do. Fortunately, I'm in SketchUp. I can do what I want to clean this up. So I might hop in here and maybe just take the whole thing, scale it down, or cut some pieces out to make it work. The point is, I'm not starting from scratch. I'm using existing geometry and making it quick and easy to go through and clean this up. Obviously, if there's going to be a vehicle, I'm going to need to be able to see out of it. So I might just come in and select just this front surface and maybe make that a different color. I'm going to make a nice black color, showing that's, that's maybe the way to see out. Finally, I might want to come in here and throw some details onto it. So with that, I'm going to use this Greeble download that I did. Now, this is the one where it shows up. There's a potential issue right from the beginning. That potential issue being one of scale. So even the smallest detail on here is bigger than my entire vehicle. That's not going to work. Fortunately, again, we're in SketchUp, so I can scale this all down. Now, this is something I want to be careful of because I don't want to necessarily scale the outside. What I want to actually do is come in and scale these pieces. So what I'm actually going to do in this case is take my whole container, move it over, um, and I'm going to explode it and take all the groups on the inside and scale those down instead. And I'm not gonna go real specific, I just want it to be small enough so that I can fit some of these onto my vehicle. I may resize or scale them back up on an individual basis. What I want is something that is a reasonable size that I could use it to throw some detail onto my model. So from there, I can grab these individual groups and throw them onto the model, just to add a little bit of extra detail. I'm gonna do this primarily by selecting and copying rather than moving each piece. But there we go. Not a bad concept model, considering I had no idea what I was doing 
or what this thing was going to look like 15 minutes ago, and I didn't draw a single scrap of raw geometry. So using just models from 3D Warehouse, you can do a pretty cool kit bash in just a couple of minutes. Hopefully that's something you like. If so, give us a like down below and subscribe. That way you'll know when Chris's video comes out on Friday. I kind of messed around with some stuff here, but he does it professionally and does an awesome job of explaining how he does it. Leave us a comment down below too. We like making these videos, but we like them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.